Hello and welcome. It's FMWC weekend this weekend, and they've told us one of the questions is going to be about Solver. So I have gone to brush up on how Solver works, and I'm going to show you a little bit of what I learned. So if you haven't heard of it, Solver is uh, an optimization tool, uh, as the name suggests. It's for solving. What if analysis tool that finds the optimal value of a target cell by changing dependent cells subject to constraints? So uh, this is an example that I borrowed from uh, Excel to me. They've got a bunch of other Oops, not that one, this one. Uh, they've got a bunch of other uh, useful examples and discussion of this if you want to get more into the details, but this is a sort of classic example of a solver problem, which is like a, a linear programming problem. So uh, we've got various different um, locations that we can ship from and to. Uh, so we've got stores in whatever six different places we can ship from three different places. And depending on where we're shipping from and where we're shipping to, there's a different cost for each. Uh, we, we know a number that we need in each place, uh, and we know the starting inventory that we have, so the maximum that we can ship. Uh, and basically what we need to do is figure out these numbers. So right now, I've just made these numbers, you know, assume that we take this 150 and split it among the three in proportion to the starting, um, in proportion to the starting inventory. Um, but that's not a great way to do it. But anyway, the, so the idea is basically these three numbers need to add up to at least the number that you need, which is 150 here, 225 here, and so on. And then the total number that you ship from each warehouse has to be no more than the starting inventory. In other words, the number remaining can't go below zero. Uh, and then depending on that, you basically, uh, you know, multiply each, you know, the number of units by the cost per unit and figure out the total shipping cost. So if we split everything pro rata across the three warehouses, we get a shipping cost of $85,000 roughly. So let's see if we can do better than that. So we'll come over here. If you don't have this already installed, uh, go Google how to install Solver. I can't do everything for you. <laughs> uh, so our objective cell is the target. This is the cell that we want to change. We want to minimize that. Uh, and then the variable cells are the ones that we're going to change. So that's these ones here. Uh, and then subject to constraints, we want to have a couple of constraints. One is uh, that the number that we ship has to be equal to, I'm going to talk about int, bin, and diff in a minute, uh, but for now it has to be equal to uh, the number that we need. Uh, we hit add, and then the number remaining has to be greater than or equal to zero. So in other words, we can't ship more than we have from any given warehouse. Um, and the important thing is there are three different uh, solving methods here. This is a linear problem, meaning everything is linear. If I, you know, add a unit here, that adds to here, it adds to here in, you know, the, the, the amount that I add to here and the amount that I add to the cost and everything else, they're, they're all linear functions. Um, and, well, basically, simplex is, uh, simplex is a very, very fast method of solving linear problems. So you'll see this is going to take like 0.2 seconds. Uh, so it says solver found a solution. By default, it'll keep the solution. Uh, there's a bunch of other stuff here. I don't know how most of it works. I don't use it, so I'm just going to hit OK. And now you can see the cost has gone down from $85,000 to $55,000. So uh, good job, solver. Uh, and you can see St. Louis is obviously our, uh, our most affordable place to ship from because we ship as much as we can from there. And then there's a mix uh, of the other two depending on where we're going to, which kind of vaguely makes sense. All right, so that's the most kind of basic thing. Where it gets more advanced is a couple of things. One is, uh, you know, your function won't always be linear. So here everything is a linear function, but if some of these were more complicated, such as, for example, maybe the shipping cost is different if you're shipping more than 100 units from a given warehouse, um, you know, maybe you have economies of scale or maybe you have diseconomies of scale or whatever, it becomes nonlinear, but it's still a continuous function. In other words, you know, this goes up by a certain amount and that one goes up by a corresponding amount. There's no breaks. Then you can use this uh, GRG nonlinear. Uh, so that's basically if, if your function of your variables is smooth, but not linear. Um, and then the last uh, solver option, which I'll show you on, on the other couple of examples I'm going to show you, is evolutionary, which basically means kind of go go explore a space where things do not have to be continuous. Um, the, the one thing I'll say is with linear programming, as far as I understand, by definition, you will just find the best result because there's there's efficient ways to search that. With everything else, you might not find the best result, but you can find a good result. 
So here's another quick example. This is from uh, the last round of the FMWC last year. And the question was, you have a 13 hour, 58 minute flight, uh, and you have all these uh, FMWC videos that you're interested in watching, uh, and you want to figure out how, how perfectly can you fill the total amount of time on the flight. So uh, the idea is basically for each video, we have to decide, are we going to watch it or not uh, in such a way as to maximize the time. So in other words, the total time we spend watching, if one means watching a video and zero means not watching a video, uh, then over here, time. Uh, yeah. Let's take this format. Okay, so here we're watching 15 hours of video, so that's too much. So let's say we drop that one. Now we're watching 13 hours and two minutes. So our leftover time is this minus this. Uh, and so we've got like about an hour unfilled there. And the question was, what's the least amount of time you can have unfilled? And there was an additional constraint, which was you want to watch at least two educational videos. Uh, so I'm gonna call it educational vids. That's gonna be the sum of, uh, let's see, as far as here. And then we're going to go solver. So we want to minimize the uh, unspent time by changing the variable cells, these guys. And now this is where we add the constraints. So the, this exact type of problem is what this bin binary thing is, is designed for. So in other words, the constraint is these can only be 0 or 1. Uh, so we're going to say OK to that, and then we also need a condition which is uh, that this number of educational videos has to be greater than or equal to 2. Uh, so we say OK to that, and is there anything else we need to do? Mm. Oh, sorry, yes, of course there is. Um, we need to add that this has to be less than or equal to this. In other words, you can't watch more than the total flight time. Or we could e equally say this one here has to be greater than or equal to 0. So we hit add. Uh, sorry, add uh, by default sets you up to add another. I don't need to add another. Uh, all right, so I'll just hit cancel on the last one. So I've got three conditions. Uh, so vary these uh, where they have to be yes or no, have to have at least two educational videos and no more than the total flight time. And I want, and it seems to have picked it for me automatically, which, okay, good, very smart. Uh, I want evolutionary. So I'm going to hit solve. And then I think you can see down here, it might be cut off on my screen. Uh, so it's got an incumbent of 39 seconds. Oh, now down to one second. So it tells you like, this is the value that I've found so far. This is, you know, I'm on sub problem 4,000. So it's trying like a whole bunch of, of different things. Um, and it's just, you know, if you think about like 18 different variables here, two to the 18 is like a quarter of a million. Um, so trying all quarter of a million solutions one by one is pretty inefficient. Uh, solver can do better. Now that it's got down to one second and the question was just to figure out what's the least time you can have left and it's pretty clear that one second is enough. So I think I can hit stop and hit OK. Yes, so I can pause it there. And so now I've got, you know, all except one second viewed. I've got three educational videos, all checks out. So that's a good example of evolutionary solver on a space that is like in this case it's sort of just at the limits of what you could theoretically do an exhaustive search on like a quarter of a million scenarios but you know if there were 10 more of these then your evolutionary search would come up with a reasonably good solution and an exhaustive search would completely fail so that's that and then one more thing that's worth uh, talking about this is a problem also from the fmwc uh from when is it uh, from 2021 round four, um, and it's called jet hockey. And the idea was you basically built a model of a tournament um, where various different teams qualify and then go through knockout rounds. And for each team, you had you know how many supporters uh, come to see that team, um, how much they spend per day. Um, and the idea was, you know, some percentage of them were super fans who would stick around until the end of the tournament no matter what, and the ones who weren't super fans would leave the day after their team got knocked out. So here, for example, Borea gets knocked out. Uh, is that meant to be Borea? I don't know. Anyway, Borea gets knocked out in the first round, so they're out on the 15th of April, so they're non-superfan fans would go home on the 16th of April. And so the question was, um, you had to find a seeding of this group of qualifying teams that would maximize the amount of money that got spent. Uh, and so in this case, there's another 
uh, a, you're basically looking at the different ways to put these 16 teams in order. And there's another kind of solver feature uh, that's designed for that. And actually, this I think is a little over over engineered. I think this one, uh, as far as I remember, is the only one you need. So here, what they're saying is they all have to be different. They all have to be integers. They all have to be greater than or equal to one, and they all have to be less than or equal to 16. But actually, that's all basically baked into all different. So all different doesn't just mean all the variables have to be different. It actually means the variables have to be the numbers from one to n, where n is the number of variables. So in other words, here there's 16 variables. All different, all by itself, means they have to be 16 different numbers from 1 to 16. So I'm 95% sure that I can delete that, delete that, uh, and delete this. Um, and then I'm just saying maximize the total spend, which comes from all the workings in the model, blah, 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 uh, by changing these variable cells subject to the constraint that these are all different evolutionary hit solve. And again, you can see down in the corner, we've got an incumbent. It's rapidly growing to start. So we're up to 1.96 million already. Uh, from like 1.6 that we started at over here. Um, and then, you know, it could run for quite a while. Hit OK. Um, like I said, same thing with this one. This will not give you the same, either the same seedings or the exact same number every time. Because, you know, if you think about a uh, factorial of 16, that's whatever that is. That's million, billion, trillion. That's 20 trillion uh, different you know, ways you can put these 16 teams in order. It doesn't do an exhaustive search. It basically, the, the idea of the evolutionary algorithm is it sort of, you know, grabs a bunch of random stuff and then takes bits of solutions that seem to be working and mixes them together, like basically breeds solutions in a certain way, um, so, so as to create more random solutions leaning toward the better ones from the previous generation. And it just repeats that a bunch of times, which, you know, statistically speaking, tends to land you with something pretty good. It does not always land you with the perfect best outcome. But again, compared to trying to search 21 trillion uh, outcomes by hand, it's pretty darn good. So those are the three uh, the three main kind of things in my mind that you need to know. Um, so, you know, simplex LP, if it's a linear problem, GRG nonlinear, if it's something where, you know, everything is moving smoothly, but not linearly, and evolutionary, if it's something where it's stepped, like this is either on or off, this team is either before this team or after that team. Um, the only one that I didn't talk about in the constraints uh, is the integer, um, but that's basically just a, another flavor of the binary one, which is, you know, it has to be a whole number. Um, but then diff, all different, is the one that's, you know, it has to be a permutation of the first n numbers. So I'm no solver expert. If there's anything where we have to go and, you know, change all these uh, all these options, I'm toast. <laughs> um, but hopefully there won't be. And that's what I got for today. Uh, oh, and sorry, there's also due to be a, a question on something actuarial, which I also don't know much about, but there is an old model off question on that. So if I have time, there will be a video on model off actuarial stuff in a couple of days. Thanks for watching. See you next time.